welcome to the Virgin Games DVD on how to play poker. Now, it's the biggest game in town. Everyone's talking about it. And in this DVD, we're going to be dealing up the essentials to get your poker game up and running. Now, I'm joined now by poker pro Martin Green from Brighton. Now, he got to the final table of the 2005 World Series of Poker, so you certainly know a thing or two about the game. Hopefully. Well, tell us why, Martin, you think the game is so popular for a start. Um, well, it's a very exciting game. It's social and extremely easy to learn. It is skill-based, but on any given day, if you're granted the right cards, absolutely anyone can win, as there is a high, well, a fairly high element of luck involved. Okay, so it's a real leveller. Very few other sports, if any, where you can take on the world champion and stand a chance of winning. Yeah, ab absolutely. And obviously, uh, internet poker has, has been a, a tremendous uh, development in the, in the game uh, over the last couple of years. It's the internet that's responsible for this explosion in popularity. Yeah, absolutely. It's just so fast and convenient. Um, it, you can go and play whenever you want, 24-7, and you'll find people from South Africa, America, Australia potentially, uh, even your next door neighbour, all wanting to play. Fantastic. Well, Texas Hold'em is all about the chips. You start with some chips and your goal is to win your opponent's chips. That is the crucial thing to remember. It's not about winning hands or getting the best cards. It's all about the chips. And soon we'll be seeing a bit of no limit Texas Hold'em. So Martin, tell us what that means. Um, well, there are different forms of poker. Um, in other forms, you're actually restricted to how much you can bet when it's your turn to play. But the great thing about no limit poker, when it's your turn to act, whether it's before the flop, after the cards are dealt, on the last card, you can put all your chips into the centre of the pot whenever you want to, if you want to, and that's why it's so exciting. Well, it sounds easy, but before you start to play, it's essential to know the rules of No Limit Texas Hold'em. Each player is dealt two cards face down. These are your hole or pocket cards. Then comes a round of betting called the pre-flop round. Anyone still in the game after this round of betting sees the flop, that is three community cards dealt face up in the centre of the table for all to play. Then comes another round of betting. Next comes another community card, the turn. Then after another round of betting comes the fifth and final community card called the river, followed by a final round of betting. Now anyone still in the hand shows their whole cards and the best hand wins. Your hand is made up of the best five cards you can make from your two whole cards and the five community cards. In order to know who's got the best hand in poker, it's essential to know the hand rankings. So here is the all-important list of hands from best to worst. First up is the Royal Flush, the best hand in poker, which consists of four pitcher cards and a ten of the same suit. Then the Straight Flush, this is five consecutive cards of the same suit. Next, four of a kind, aka quads, four cards of the same rank accompanied by a kicker. Then it's the full house. This consists of three of a kind and a pair. If there are two full houses, the highest three of a kind takes the pot. Flush, this hand has five cards of the same suit. Then it's a straight, five consecutive cards of any suit. Aces can be high or low. Next, it's three of a kind, aka trips or a set. This is three cards of the same rank. Then it's two pair, two cards of one rank, two cards of another rank. Finally, one pair, two cards of one rank and high card. This is any hand that doesn't qualify as one of the better hands above. So we've seen how the table works in principle, but now let's look a little closer at the action to learn how the game actually takes place. The player who acts as the dealer is called the button. They're identified at the table by a white disc and play proceeds clockwise from the button. The player to the immediate left of the button must post the small blind. This is a compulsory bet to get the betting action going. The next player on the left is the big blind. The big blind is always double the small blind. The two blinds are forced bets. The player to the left of the big blind is under the gun and is the first to act pre-flop. He or she may now fold, call or bet. When a player calls, he is matching the previous bet. If a player bets, then they are raising the pot. To stay in the hand, players must call and match the previous highest bet. On the first round of betting, the last person to act is always the big blind. The big blind always has the option of raising the pot. 
After the first round of betting, if more than one player is still in the hand, we see a flop. This is three cards Eight, dealt face Jack, up in the middle of the four. table that are shared by all the players. Now we have another round of betting. This time the action starts to the left of the dealer button. This player is first to act and has the option to check and not bet, as no player previously raised the pot and there are no blinds. In this and all remaining rounds of betting, the last player to act will be on the button. Next we see a fourth community card. Ten. This is called the turn card or fourth street. Ten we then have another round of betting. And then a fifth and final oh. community card is dealt called the river card or fifth street. Eight. There is then one more round of betting, after which, if there is more than one player left in the pot, we have a showdown to see who has the best five-card hand. So there are the poker essentials, but to gain maximum enjoyment of the game and to become a better player, it's essential to gain as much knowledge as possible. So we're going to break things down into specific areas and we'll start with how to play your hole or pocket cards. Now the best thing to do in poker is to break things down into categories and there are three main groups, big pairs, drawing hands and milking hands. So Martin, talk us through the categories. Well, the big pairs, big hands, these are the type of hands that you win most of your pots with. We're looking at hands like a pair of aces, pair of kings in the hole, or an ace king or an ace queen when there's an ace on the flop. That's called top pair. So your opponents are then going to need two pair, uh, three of a kind, or a flush or a straight to beat you. And obviously those hands aren't that easy to come by. So when you have these big, big hands, big pairs, they're best played against few opponents. So you want to be betting and raising with them. OK, drawing hands. Drawing hands are hands such as small pairs, like a pair of twos, a pair of fours, a pair of fives, um, which are your pocket uh, hole cards. Um, also, hands like six, seven of spades, eight, seven of diamonds, connecting cards which are, which are suited. Now, these are quite opposite to pairs of aces and kings. Um, they're actually quite difficult to make a big hand with. So ideally, you want to be in there cheaply and against multiple opponents. So when you do hit a big hand, like you have a pair of fours and there's a four, come, four comes on the flop, um, there's plenty of money in the pot and there's other opponents who you can win chips off. OK, and finally, milking hands. Milking hands. Um, the, these are hands that develop, they're, they're hands similar to the drawing hands we've just discussed, but they're hands that can develop into flushes and straights, and you feel as though you almost certainly have the winning hand. If you flop a straight or you make a straight on the turn, which is the fourth card, um, you feel almost certain that you've got the winning hand, and you want to be trying to win as many chips as you can from your opponents, but there's different types of strategies that, that, that you will use to try and extract those chips. So we've heard a lot of theory, it's now time to put into practice at the Virgin Poker Table some of the aspects of the game we've discussed so far and with Martin's help we're going to assess after every hand how our group of budding poker pros are getting on. Amanda's our dealer, let's play some poker. And here we can see the white disc which is the button and the small blind to its immediate left, the big blind two to its left. And now it's the under the gun player who is to the immediate left of the big blind who is first to act and in this instance he's folded, then the next player total. has made a raise. I'll call. call. Now the button's called the raise. Pass. The small blind folds. Need another 15. Re-raise. And the big blind has made a re-raise. So she certainly likes her hand. Oh, cool. Call. Fold. Pass. And we have a quick call from seat one. Okay. 
Nine, two, the seven. The flop comes three innocent, low-looking cards with two clubs. Two. And 12, the thousand. big blind fires out a bet. Cool. Cool. The player one off the button quickly calls, so they both seem to like their hands. Two. The two of spades comes off on the turn. And the big blind is going to fire out another bet. Nineteen thousand. I'm all in. Now Very the big in. all in move, remember this is no limit hold him. He moves all his chips into the middle. So a big decision for the big blind. Can she commit all her chips? Have chip pass. No, she decides to pass. fold. Okay, so seat four has folded, but for the purposes of this exercise, let's see what the river card would have been. Two. And if both players could now reveal your hands as well. Important, Martin, to know that this isn't a normal showdown. This is just obviously for the purposes of learning. Yeah. Now talk us through this, Martin. I actually like the way both players uh, have played this pot. Um, seat one with the kings um, raised originally. Um, seat four re-raised, and then the kings just flat called, mm. um, trying to trap, trying to trap uh, seat four for some chips later on. When the flops come down, there's no cards above a jack or above a king, so they both got over pairs to the board, which are very strong hands. You certainly can't blame um, seat four for betting out. Um, another trap from um, seat one, he just flat called the bet on the flop, and then on the turn, when quite rightly seat four bet again, thinking she's probably still in front, then seat one made his big all-in move. He felt very strongly he was ahead. He may be up against a pair of queens, or a, pe or a pair of jacks, or maybe even a, 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 a potentially a flush draw. Um, and seat four has correctly folded to keep her. She felt she was behind at that point. And although she's lost a lot of chips in the past, she's played that very well, and she's still in the game with some chips. It's like a martial, ga uh, martial art. So you have to learn how to control yourself, you have to learn how to beat your opponent, you have to learn how, when to withdraw, when to go for, for the fight, for the diet. And um, I think it's a wonderful battle. Let's have a look at another hand. Pass. How the under the gun player decides to fold. Pass. As does the next. Raise. And the raise button four, fires out a total. raise. Two to call. I'll call and raise. Re raise. And there's a re raise from the small the blind, so she looks as though she's probably Five got a big hand. Nine total. Pass. The big blind gets out of the way. Cool. Call. And the button calls the raise. Now the flop Ten, is two, king high king. with two spades. Two and the small blind is the first to act. And it looks like she's going to make a bet. Raise. 12,000. Cool. Cool. And the button's going to call, so they both seem to like their hands at the moment. And three. the innocent looking three of diamonds comes off. Now the small blind's going to bet 10, again. Thousand. Now remember, the different coloured chips actually are different denominations. So the white chips are actually worth 5,000 in this game. The Race. blue chips worth 2,000. And the red, just 1,000. And the button actually re-raises the bet more, from the small blind. Total. Ten to call. I'll call. Call. She's having a think, but she's going to call the raise. So we're going to the final card, the river card, and there's lots of chips in the middle already. Seven. Check. I'm Check. all in. The all big all-in move from the button. A 
A big test oh, for the small blind, but she's oh. going to put her That's remaining good. chips in the middle. So we have a showdown, and we have the big pair of aces, which beats the pair of kings. Well, that was an interesting hand. Did they play it right? Um, in part, uh, probably, um, but I think the uh, all in on the river was very, very dangerous. Um, the situation we've got here is we've got a, a very big pair, the best, uh, the best hands you can possibly have in, in no limit, um, Texas Hold'em against uh, nice cards, king, king, queen. There was some raising pre-flop. I quite like seat uh, two's small re-raise, which kept seat one's king, queen in the hand and uh, managed to trap him perfectly on the flop. Unfortunately for seat one, he's hit top pair with a good kicker on the flop and he's probably going to lose most of his chips to a pair of aces unless he hits two pair. Um, on the river, seat two, who have been betting every street, finally checked. And seat one then pushed all his chips in the middle and made the big all-in move. The problem is he was probably only going to be called if he was, if he was beaten. Uh, and that's how it, how it panned out. Well, it's probably the most famous expression in poker, and when you hear it, you know there's going to be some action. Going all in literally means putting all your chips in the middle, and it's often a do-or-die moment for any player. Martin, is it a good thing to do? Um, it can be a good thing to do, uh, but it, it is risky, and you're uh, risking your tournament life or all your chips in a cash game. Um, um, if you move all in, uh, with a good hand and you're called by the second best hand or a weaker hand then obviously it's a good thing you're going to win all those chips likewise if you move all in and you can force someone else to fold the best hand again it's a, it's a great move but you've got to be very very careful because you literally are going to have to pick up your coat and leave the game if you get it wrong and someone's got a better hand than they call but as you say if you get it right psychologically it's a great boost for you as well not only have you got more chips but yeah, absolutely. You can you have more chips, so you can have more momentum, and you can be more aggressive on the table. Um, it gives you confidence. Mm. Um, and when the next time you move all in, then the other guys probably don't have as many chips. So at least you're not walking. You're not walking out of the out of the tournament. Okay, but what if I've just got a few chips left? You go all in. Can I still take part in that hand? Yeah, absolutely. No matter how many chips you've got left, you can always move all in. You can always put your last chips in the middle. Uh, the other player, he may have many more chips than you, but he just has to match however many chips you had left. Let's take a look at another hand. Now the first player to have to remember immediately to the Pass. left of the big blind and she folds. Pass. Pass. The next player folds. A raise. Raise. Now that Button has made a raise. Total. He's gonna try and Pass. take those blinds. The small blind folds. Will the big blind defend? Pass. No, he throws them away. Okay, so let's have a look at your cards. Seven two suited. 9-10 suited and king Martin, eight. How on earth has a 7-2 won that pot? Well, very, very good play. A strong, aggressive play from a seat one. He's got the best position on the table, the dealer button. Um, and he's asked the small blind and the big blind, have you got a big enough call, uh, big, big enough hand, sorry, uh, to call my raise? And they haven't. And that's good, strong play. Another important factor of Texas Hold'em is your position at the table. So Martin, could you please explain to us the significance of having the dealer button in front of you and what sort of advantage that gives you? It's a very big advantage, very, very important in the game of, game of poker. It means that on all the betting rounds, um, you're actually last.